and the Department of Justice coming after us. Let the cannabis community fix the one percenters crappy economy. Donated um, 
a lot of time to my community center. They have donated organic vegetables um, from their garden. They sponsored a trip for our patient advocates who are um, living, uh, residing in the Tenderloin um, up north to uh, look at their environment. These would be, this would be the last couple that you would find any disabled patient saying, hey, those guys are exploiting us. By us, you mean? Why aren't they letting us, you mean? I mean disabled Americans that have a medical cannabis card. We have been basically taken out of the equation. No, we don't want profiteers in California. We want good patient care. We want accessible uh, variety to choose from. We want a safe atmosphere. We have proven that when our dispensaries are in neighborhoods that we've basically been redlined into, that we improve safety. This is a public safety issue to me as well. Why would you force disabled people into an illegal market? That makes no sense to me as a I patient guess. advocate. You say and spell your name for me. My name is Shona Gokunar, S-H-O-N-A-G-O-C-H-E-N-A-U-R. And, and you're with the community center, say the name of your community center. Uh, my community center is the Access of Love Community Center. I am a seated member as a patient advocate of the Medical Cannabis Task Force of the City of San Francisco. And um, the, other, the other thing I was wondering is, so this is part of, you're saying that you, were, you cried that you were upset because they were, but this is part of a larger effort, and you said you were surprised because they were so compliant. They went after somebody who Not was Not only were so they compliant, they were pioneers. There's a difference between compliance and being a pioneer. Matt and Courtney are pioneers. They have worked with Mendocino government, Sheriff Allman, and other law enforcement were prepared to testify on behalf of this cooperative at the state level. Why is this the first raid after the U.S. attorneys announced this? This makes us believe that they have declared war on the people who are trying to create a compliant atmosphere in California and bring about public safety, not just for medical cannabis patients and providers, but for our communities as a whole. Have you talked to Matt and Courtney? I did receive an uh, email last night from Matt, and he said that they had confiscated his cell phone and that he had no way to get in contact with me. And so I did email him back my um, telephone number, and I haven't spoken to him as of yet. Um, we were, uh, today, um, our community held our cultivation committee, which we did meet quorum for. Um, so I have been in City Hall with my phone off for the last two hours because I'm a voting member of that committee. In terms of medical cannabis patients, is there a reaction, is there a concern in the community right now? Um, patients are scared to death that, they, that we're going to be forced back to street corners, to dealers who tend to prey upon disabled people, in particular disabled women. Rob. Um, rob uh, disabled people. Um, we're concerned that the banks are no longer um, accepting um, our debit cards when we go to our uh, dispensaries, so now we're forced to uh, carry cash as disabled people, and that um, inflicts upon our public safety and the public safety of our host neighborhoods. This is a completely contrary to the um, public safety message that I believe the safe access community is trying to bring, not only to our state, but to the other 15 medical cannabis states. And at this point, you know, I could kind of joke and say we'd like to succeed from the nation, but I'm not even joking. This is a fundamental um, being put in a position of being second-class citizens as disabled Americans, and I'm not going to stand for it. So you mentioned you're a patient. Do you mind sharing what it is that you need a cannabis for? I have a seizure disorder, and most of the seizure disorders uh, medications uh, cause severe side effects. Uh, you know, when you see those commercials and they have the long list of all the side effects, which include, you know, 
nausea, even suicidal tendencies, etc., drastic mood changes, where if I can find a dispensary where I can sit down and medicate, when I feel a seizure coming on, I can medicate and then I can go and leave that dispensary and come into this country and be a productive part of the workforce. And now I'm being told that I can't. I'm also told that I no longer have my constitutional rights to bear arms. And I'm not a big supporter, I'm not, you know, in the NRA or anything like that, but recently I have been stalked and was actually suggested to me by the SFPD that I learn to use a handgun and now I'm not allowed to protect myself. It sounds absolutely nuts to me and I'd like to know how, um, and I'm also really saddened because I don't see our state government standing up for us, yet they took millions upon millions of dollars in tax yes. revenue. It's yes. taxation without representation. It's being relegated to a second-class citizen, and it's also blocking our access to what our physicians recommend. That is a private relationship between a doctor and a patient, and my physician recommended medical cannabis for my condition. Have you tried to get in touch with any state folks about this? Yes, I have. And there's only... Since it happened yesterday. Yes, yes. And there's only um, really two uh, members of the state that have uh, corresponded with me openly. Um, and those are our LGBT leaders, Tom Amiano and Mark Leno. I um, have yet to hear anything come out of Kamala Harris. I have yet to hear anything come out of Governor Brown. What did Amiano and Leno say? Um, I have the press release from, from Amiano actually on our window at the it center. Was similar. He's but similar to you. Yeah, he basically said that this is outrageous, that this is a prohibition, and that it's a complete betrayal by the Obama administration. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm with, I'm with KTBU. I came in a little bit late to this. Um, can we just go back to the beginning about what sure. what what, uh, what sparked this? I guess there was a raid, a raid yesterday. Yes, there was a raid uh, yesterday morning at 6:30 of the Northstone Organics um, Farm. Uh, Matthew Cohen and his wife Courtney were awoken with machine guns in their face um, and they were detained for over eight hours uh, and these are some of the most compliant pioneers, not just compliant, but pioneers of um, the regulations in Mendocino. And, um, it's just very tragic to the patients because what we heard, and I'm sure the rest of America heard, was that the U.S. Attorney Generals were looking at the patient exploitation and profiteers. This is a couple and an organization that has proven themselves to be extremely compliant, working with local law enforcement, and working with um, the entire uh, county of Mendocino to make this a publicly safe, viable option. So it seems like they are contradicting themselves. They went after compliant pioneers. Well, that, that, that leads to my next question. Why do you think they targeted them? I believe that they targeted them to send a message to the other pioneers in California to remain silent, to go underground, and that um, anyone who attempts to create an atmosphere of order and public safety around medical cannabis will be on target from the federal government. And what are you hoping to spread today with, the, with this protest? What I'm hoping to spread today with this protest is first and foremost to have um, our Governor Brown and our federal representative Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris speak out for patients' rights and not pushing disabled people into an illegal and underground market to stand up for our safety. You know, I mean, it's really huge to me that um, that disabled Americans' uh, concerns aren't even on the table. What this is about is a big public hysteria and, you know, using words like crackdown and, you know, do issuing the first raid with machine guns to a completely peaceful couple that have an organic farm.
it's it's terrifying. They donate their vegetables. Who, exactly, donate their vegetables to inner city people in San Francisco. Um, my community center got, you know, huge coolers full of the organic vegetables that they also grow on their farm, um, which helps us with our health. So these are folks that are not, um, you know, not what I believe the U.S. attorneys were saying they were going to target. It seems that this is a moralistic thing and not a thing of compliance and public safety. But the, the, the federal government, the government is only targeting, they say, large, large farms, large, large, you know, um, medical institutions. So why not just go to a small one? One of the issues with saying what is large and what is small, that hasn't been determined. What is a profiteer? What is not a profiteer? That has not been determined. There are no sane regulations. So really when they say that, there's no weight in that whatsoever. And saying, well, you got to keep things small, that keeps prices high for patients, especially people living on a fixed income, which the majority of medical cannabis patients live on a disabled person income. So when we gather together and become larger, it is cost effective. It is the ability to have choice in varieties of medicine. There's no reason to say it matters how big or how small. What matters is if it's operating as a profit or a non-profit. And I think they targeted not the largest producer at all in California. They targeted a pioneer of regulations to send a message of fear. Our medicine, our state. Our medicine, our state. Our medicine, our state. Not criminals. Reparations. Not criminals. Who voted for Obama? We did. We did. Who voted for Kamala Harris? We did. Well, you know something? We need to ask them one question. Where is the law? Where is the law? person that takes it upon themselves to provide medicine to sick and dying patients go out of their way to bring the love down here. Don't you think the people that you put in office should show some love too? Yeah. 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 I say this to you guys. This is the start of what they said was already over with. They said the drug war was over with. Man. It's gone. It's a thing of the past. But it seems the federal rallies, shall I say, have not gotten the message. They don't realize that people are dying trying to get access to their medicine. He lied about what he was going to change about. He changed, all right, he changed from worse to worse. Everything he said he was going to do, he taking it away. You know, there's so many people out here that look at us and say, oh, they look healthy, they look healthy, they look healthy. They don't need medicine. But see, they on the outside looking in instead of looking on the inner side to the out. You can't see what's wrong with people on the outside. I mean, a lot of medical cannabis face. Some you can't. You, know, you mean you that, can't see cancer? You mean you can't see a seizure disorder? You mean you can't see a brain tumor? Right. 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 Can't see right. But before I was a patient advocate, I'm a youth advocate, I'm a homeless advocate, and I'm also a peer advocate. Uh, you know, taking the medical cannabis aspect out of it, I talk to a lot of homeless people, a lot of youth, a lot of uh, transgenders, a lot of elderly, a lot of military personnel that all say that medical cannabis have benefits for them. If we be a government uh, for the people, by the people, uh, with the people, about the people, then why are we condemning what the people want? 87% of Americans, all over America, would like cannabis to be instituted in some way of our lives. Why are we going against their wishes? Our Constitution allows us to do kind of whatever we want to do if it harms none or doesn't impose on our freedoms, why are we condemning a person to use the medicine that they need for their life if it's saving their life?
we're looking at the jobs bill. And I'd like to read a little bit of uh, our unions standing with medical cannabis retail workers. Um, United Food and Commercial uh, Workers, the nation's largest retail worker organization, demands an immediate end to the U.S. Attorney's misguided prosecution of operators of small dispensaries of legal medical cannabis in uh, California. Um, there's an estimate that we could lose a lot of good paying jobs with health benefits if we lose the medical cannabis industry of California. There's good jobs with health benefits. Jobs! I'm talking about jobs being lost in California. That's not okay. And we do have uh, a member of a trade association that perhaps can help us address this a little bit better. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hey. What's going on today, everybody? My name is Ethan Summer. I'm the executive director of the uh, Medical Cannabis Association, which was founded by Dr. Todd uh, about 10 years ago. He's since passed on. Um, you know, I got a phone call today from a friend of mine who was really bummed out because he just lost his job. He was actually working for uh, Matt Cohen over at Bristone Organics. And this is a really nice guy. He's out of a job now. You can think about it for that. Uh, here's a fun little fact for you. Did you know that last year the uh, Board of Equalization, which is the, I guess, kind of like the IRS, if you will, uh, 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 said that it got $150 million in tax revenue from the dispensaries last year. Now, that's just from the dispensaries. Think about the hydro stores, the, all the ancillary businesses out there. So this industry, all right, is very important. Uh, for for this state and for our jobs and and for our 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 our, our, our communities and um, it's very important that we, we speak out to, to protect our jobs. So Jennifer Nicoletto and I'm an attorney who specializes in medical cannabis defense and uh, I am here because of the all-out war that the Obama administration is apparently waging against our medical cannabis community here in California. It is an absolute about face. Uh, when you look at his policy that he uh, had uh, reflected in 2009, he said he was going to leave it to the states. But all of a sudden, lo and behold, two weeks ago, we got a surprise. Our clients are getting, you know, uh, letters from their landlords saying that the landlords are facing up to 40 years in federal prison and seizure of their assets if they continue to uh, rent their spaces to these medical cannabis dispensaries. Uh, they have 45 days now to be evicted from the date of that letter. And they targeted, they said first, those that were within uh, a certain distance of schools, but we also have a client who's just gotten a letter because they are located too close to a park. <laughs> All right? So, you know, it's much broader than they are, than they are, you know, letting people know. And the other issue is they're also attacking now the publishers and, uh, you know, magazines, and they're trying to say that they are going to go to prison, potentially, if they keep advertising an illegal substance. Meanwhile, uh, you've got the IRS, who is collecting taxes, mind you, on the proceeds from illegal drugs in violation of the uh, Controlled Substances Act. Now, I see a little hypocrisy there. Oh, How no kidding. is the IRS less culpable when they are obtaining the money, okay, which they don't let them write anything off. That's why Harborside over there in Oakland got a $3 million tax bill, something to that effect, because no business expenses can be written off, but yet they can take our money. Now, the culpability level between the IRS taking that money and a landlord that is renting out a space at market rate is unbelievably different. So what we want to do now is potentially sue the IRS.
grow marijuana for four compassion patients they have left that haven't passed on on their list. They have, um, I think it's 55 pending uh, patent uh, ideas, and we're really looking at also a war of who is going to control medical cannabis. Is it going to be the pharmaceutical companies, and um, or is it going to be the medical cannabis community? I also want to uh, remind people that on the global level, the United Nations uh, Committee on Drug Policies declared the drug war a failure. That committee included Reaganites like uh, Schultz, um, our former U.S. Uh, federal attorney for our district, I'm going to perhaps not say his name right, but Rusinelli, basically said that he had some more important things to deal with than medical cannabis, that he was more concerned about human trafficking. And that was the Republican appointee for our U.S. district here. So I'm asking, what is the difference here between Democrats and Republicans? I'm not seeing much difference here. No. Do you know? Uh, Progressive state of California, people are waking up with machine guns in their face for complying with state law. None of this makes sense. And I really, really, really sincerely hope that people, after this rally, if you live in this district, go up to your federal representative's office, ask for Melanie Nutter or Dan Bernal, who are her legislative aides. your constituents. What are you doing? Because so far, our federal representative, to my knowledge, to, as of today, has not said anything about stepping up. And the other thing I'm concerned with is if the federal government is going to come out with this, we're going to stop patient exploitation, how come there's no patients at the table to articulate what patient exploitation consists of and what our solutions are to make our collectives run by our communities. We're not being included in the discussion and we're being pushed into danger. There's clear evidence that prohibition causes violence to escalate. So for public safety reasons, for every reason that we can count on and, and, and articulate, this is failure. But a declaration of war. Again, I don't they want their drug right money right back. <laughs> well, here's what I wrote so far. Truth is the real money. I wrote Rupert Murdoch killed the, the liberal class. It isn't news. Or the truth gate, the truth gatekeepers. It's it's ideological warfare. Let the cannabis community fix the one percenters crappy economy. The war is a racket, that's for sure.